Hey everybody, I'm actually on the road right now and I'm currently in the state of New Jersey, the Garden State. I'm uh, speaking tonight in a little assembly in Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, this morning I was in Mawa. Uh, later in the week I'll be uh, visiting the assembly in Manhattan. Uh, now, I thought I'd just to take a few minutes here and post uh, our next psalm, which is Psalm 33. Uh, this psalm is uh, a psalm of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord for his creation and for his mercy and loving kindness toward the nation of Israel. By extension and application, we can uh, write ourselves into that, the goodness of the Lord, his mercy toward us. It opens up with the fact that we have a new song. Verse 3, sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud voice, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. We do have a new song, and in the uh, day uh, that will be taken up uh, to heaven uh, in the rapture, we'll be around the throne, we'll be singing that new song, uh, that the Lamb who died for us, shed his precious blood for us, redeemed us from every kindred, tongue, tribe, people, and nation. And we'll be singing that new song. We can sing even the new song now on earth. Uh, sing praises to him, sing our hymns, sing our thanksgivings, our praises. There is actually a new song. The world has its song, and I'm not saying it's wrong necessarily to listen to uh, the <clears throat> the old songs. Uh, if everything's done in moderation, uh, we want to make a, a legal commandment for these types of things. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable or expedient. And, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul says if we sing, making melody in our hearts to the Lord, singing hymns, songs, and spiritual songs, you know, that uh, that helps us spiritually because we're filled thereby by the Holy Spirit. It sets our heart, our mind, our thoughts on the things of the Lord. Thereby the Holy Spirit comes and fills us with his uh, presence. So let's sing the new song. But it says here in verse 5, He loves righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord, or actually the loving kindness of the Lord. Now, there's a lot of bad things in the world, not in planet Earth, not in the creation. Creation's beautiful. The world is a beautiful place, and it's a good place. The Lord made it good. The problem is man and the heart of man, that this present evil age, uh, Satan is its god, and, and um, he works in fallen man and our sinful fleshly, uh, desires and uh, rules over men in that way and therefore th the world becomes corrupt before God and uh, there's much evil there's sin uh, there's suffering uh, there's war and all of these things uh, but what it says here the loving kindness of the Lord is is present also we can see it in his handiwork and also in his providential mercies in our lives uh, you know he provides for us even in our physical needs and all of these things despite the fact that you know our our, our hearts can be sinful and uh, opposed to him his reign uh, falls upon the just and the unjust his sun shines upon both the good and the evil we see his wonders in creation in the psalm but also his blessing of the nation of israel we get in verse six by the word of the lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth and someone has said about the psalm or this particular verse in the psalm, that the, the starry host, that is the heavens, uh, the stars in the heavens, he's speaking here of the stars, uh, were created by the, the breath of his mouth. Um, he called the Lord from this verse, someone has called the Lord uh, the star-breathing God. He's the star-breathing God. The, the stars were created by the breath of his mouth. He spoke the word, and it came to pass. And um, we get in verse 7, he gathers the waters of the sea together as in a heap. He lays uh, up the depth in the storehouses. You know, we see his power, tremendous power in creation. We see these huge, phenomenal uh, uh, stars that are in the universe that scientists have, have uh, seen in their, through their electronic equipment, through their telescopes. And uh, just amazing, the stars that are so huge that they would dwarf our sun even. And, you know, another psalm says that he calls them all by name, that the, the Lord knows everyone, just like he knows every hair on every head, on every person on planet Earth. You know, his power is incredible. His omniscience is incredible. Uh, it's just amazing, our God. And uh, we should bow before him. It's the, it's the 
work of his his hands and it's from the breath of his mouth it says in verse 9 for he spoke and it was done he commanded and it stood fast he spoke the worlds into existence he spoke the universe into existence your friends this is our god our god and father and the lord jesus christ too is involved in the creation the agent he's the word nothing came into being without him not one thing john says in john chapter one not one thing came into being apart from him and also he's the sustainer of all things we get that in colossians one and hebrews one that he sustains all things holds all things together uh, by the word of his power you know it's not just the fact that everything is created by his word but it's held together sustained by his word and should he speak the word it would be dissolved instantly and then we see uh, another very interesting verse here uh, verse 12 blessed is the nation whose god is the lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance now this verse is continually quoted out of context blessed is the nation whose god is the lord in other words we would apply it to our own nation uh, canada united states wherever we happen to live and we say you know as a, a sort of a truism uh, blessed is the nation whose god is the lord and when people say that and quote that what they're what they're trying to do sometimes is to uh, make the christian or make the church sort of um, identified with the, the the you know political construct of their nation in other words uh, that the church uh, and the nation are almost interchangeable like uh, what's good for the nation is good for the church what's good for the church is good for the nation and and um, sometimes you don't know if they're speaking about their country or if they're speaking about the church but these are distinct things and um, this verse rightly interpreted as blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his inheritance well who is that people that he's chosen for his inheritance in this verse it's the people of Israel there was only one nation on earth that was God's nation on earth that's the people of Israel there's no other country in the world even if we've got uh, the Lord's name on our dollar or on our currency or on our law courts or whatever there's only one country in the world that's God's nation in the world that was God's nation in the world that was his inheritance in the world and that is the people of Israel the church is not a nation I mean we are a holy nation but we're not a political entity and Christians have to be very very careful about identifying the church and identifying us with political parties political movements with the governments of the day that come and go you know the nations will fall and the psalm looks at this it says uh, the Lord looks down from heaven verse 13 he beholds all the sons of men from the place of his, inhab his inhabitation he looks upon the inhabitants of the earth he fashions their heart alike he considers their works and then he says uh, in verse 16 behold the eye of the Lord is on those that fear him on those whose hope is in his steadfast love that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine and just to back up a few verses I wanted to get this verse 16 is what I meant to read verse 16 the king is not saved by his great army a warrior is not delivered by his great strength the war horse is a false hope for salvation and by his great might cannot rescue man trusts in his military power his economic power but that's folly and uh, as the believer believers we should only trust in the Lord God will judge the nations and there's only one nation that he has established eventually that will rule in the millennium that's the people of Israel Israel will be the head the nations will be the tail but the church won't be here the church will be reigning with Christ in glory in heaven we have a different calling and a different destiny let's not mix these two things up but let us do give praise in the new song for our God who has created even the starry host of heaven and has breathed them out by his spoken word amen